Greetings, it is Maxo Diddly here, and today I am here with another Java tutorial to help you get an A in your coursework or exam. And today we're here with how to delete a record in Java. But, unlike previous tutorials, which there'll be an eye up in the corner if you want to see how to delete a record based on a search term, we are going to be just deleting a record on a specified line, which can be handy in some niche scenarios. Like maybe you know for a fact that your first 50 records in your file are invalid so you just want to get rid of them all. Or you know there's record number 5 needs to go. Whatever it is, this gives you more flexibility for your coursework or whatever you're making. So let's get right into it. Firstly, in the NetBeans IDE, if you want to know where your project folder is, you can right click on your project, go to properties, There'll be a file path here you can copy and paste into your file explorer and that's where you'll find your text file if by default you're just doing a file name and then an extension like .txt. And by the way, yes it's a text file but this it's using a CSV format. If you do a .csv file this is going to work, don't worry. It will work for many different file formats that support text. With that out of the way, firstly, make sure you import all of these libraries, which we're going to be using for writing and reading from a file. And in our main method, we have remove record, records.txt, and then a line with the record we want to delete. So let's get into implementing this method. So we have a public static void, remove record, string file path, int delete line. So this method isn't going to return anything because we just want to delete a file. Yes, you could return a boolean to confirm if you've deleted that record or not, but we're not going to do that for this tutorial. It should be easy enough to add in yourself. It's called remove record. We take in the first string, which is going to be the file path of which contains the record we want to delete, and int delete line is the line we want to delete. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do string temp file equals temp.txt. Then we're going to do file old file equals new file file path and file new file equals new file temp file. So what's going on here? So A level computer science theory says to delete a record what you do is you open your current file. You then create a temp file. You go through each line. If the line you are currently reading doesn't satisfy the delete conditions you write it to the temp file. You keep doing this. If the current line you are reading satisfies the conditions of deleting that line or record, maybe the number matches, the, the search term matches, then you don't write it to the temp file. And you do this for the entire file. Then, once you finish, you delete the current file that you were just reading. Then, you rename the temp file to whatever that old file was called. And that's the basic theory of it. You could also just use an array to store everything temporarily and then rewrite everything back into the file. But we're going to stick to this method to keep it consistent with what you're being taught. So that's what we're setting up here. We're just creating some files to do what the theory describes. After that, we're going to set up a couple other variables, int line equals zero and string current line. Int line is the current line we are reading as an integer, so line 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and so on. And then string current line is going to store the data of that current line, so it will be the record. So the next thing we want to do is we want to do a try catch statement. So try catch exception e uh, curly fancy brackets which is basically try some code, if something goes wrong, execute what's in the catch statement. If nothing goes wrong, just carry on with your life. And now you're going to get a brain dump of uh, objects relating to file handling. If you have watched a previous tutorial, you're going to be super familiar with what's going on here. And to be honest, most of this is going to look the same because it's just a minor modification. But for you new people, we're going to create a file writer object. We're going to call it fw because we're lazy. Then it's equal new file writer, temp file and true. Uh, this boolean determines if we're going to overwrite a file or add to a file. So if we want to add to a file, we do true. If we want to overwrite a file, we do false. Since we're adding records, 
we need to put this on true. Then we do buffer writer BW equals new buffer writer FW. After that, we do print writer PW equals new print writer BW. So we're literally adding in the new writer we create to each new writer we're creating. I might one day do a video explaining what all of these actually do, but this is a good way to do it if you have the time to write this all out. Then we do file reader FR equals new file reader file path which is our string here to tell us which file we want to read. Then we do buffered reader br equals new buffered reader fr. You might want to pause the video just so you have a time to write this all down if you haven't already. But we've literally set up objects that are going to read the file and objects that are going to write to a file to go with the theory we discussed earlier. After that, we're going to do a simple while loop. So we're going to do while current line equals br.readline, which is referring to our buffered reader here then not equals null. So what we can do is, since we're using brackets, we can firstly assign the value of current line to whatever br.readline returns, which is going to be the current line we're reading. Then, after that, we can check if whatever this is, if it's equal to null or not. It will be equal to null if there's no more lines to read in the file. So we can essentially just do a while loop to loop through each line in the file, without even knowing how many lines are in the file, which is really handy. After that, we're going to do line plus plus. So when we start, we're going to increment the line we're reading because we've just read the line. Now we need to update the counter variable called line to say, hey, we're currently on line two, we're on line three, we're on line four, and whatever. Then we do if delete line is not equal to line. So if the current line we're reading isn't equal to the line we want to delete, we're going to write this line to the temporary file. And you might be thinking, why are we doing this? Well, it goes back to the theory we discussed of if the current line we're reading doesn't match the search criteria to delete or remove a record, we write it to the temp file, which is what we're doing. Because our file writer it has is writing to the temp file, but our file reader is, write, is reading from the current file. And that's basically it for the while loop. Now we're going to play a game. For every time we have to type the word close, take a shot. No, don't actually do that because you might be passed out. Just kidding. So we want to do pw.flush, pw.close, fr.close, br.close, bw.close, and fw.close. We are closing all of these basically, which is just good practice to do. After that, we are doing oldfile.delete. This is going to be deleting the old file. Why? We've written everything we want to keep from it into the temp file. Then we do file dump equals new file path. And then we do new file dot rename to dump. So why are we calling it dump? Literally, this is just another temp, a temporary object. And what we're doing is we're literally just after we delete our old file, we need a way to convert that file path into a temporary file object, so then our new file can just be renamed to it using this function, which is basically what we're doing. And that's basically it. But one other thing, just make sure to have something in your catch statement, like maybe print out the error message so you know what's going on. But that's basically it for this tutorial. So we're going to show the code in action. So this is our records.txt file which is located in our project folder. Since we haven't specified the folder for it to go in, it just goes in the base file path. But we've got a bunch of records, so we want to delete line number six. And that should delete the Zhao record, because that's, the, that's number six in terms of line count. Uh, Jingles is obviously number seven. Bob is number five. But there's also a Bob that's number one. We have duplicate records here just to prove that this is a way to go around if you have duplicate records. So save your work and then hit play. As you can see, it was successful. And if we look at the file, a record is gone. But you might be thinking, Max, why didn't you delete the gel record? Well, I've just realized something. I didn't put in the right number into the, fun into the function. So we actually deleted a different record instead. But we're now going to delete the Zhao record. 
but I put it in a five because it's now number five because a record above it was deleted at some point. And then we hit play again. It says successful. Look, Zhao is gone. Let's do one more just to remove all doubt. We're going to put in number one. Then we hit play, build successful, we go to records, Bob is gone. I'd like to think I have confirmed that this code works. Anyway, thanks for being a great audience. Be sure to leave a like in the comment if you enjoyed. If you want more Java tutorials, then you should definitely subscribe as I will be posting more. And hopefully this helps you get an A in your course recording exam. Thanks for watching.